This video is made with the help of the Technical University of Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Last time we talked about periodic orbits and why we want to identify whether they exist or not. We also talked about index theory where we proved that a periodic orbit can only ever exist if the net index of the fixed points inside the orbit sum to plus one. This global information is very useful, but it doesn't give us everything we'd like to know. It turns out that there are other ways to also disprove the existence of periodic orbits. One of these methods is called the Ben Dixon criterion, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Before we get started, I think it's a good idea to do a little refresher. This all started with a challenging second order differential equation. This equation can be hard to solve, and at face value, it's not easy to determine from the equation alone what the nature of the solutions are. Are they stable? Are they periodic? It's hard to tell. However, we can make our lives easier by converting this differential equation into state space form, which in general looks like x dot is equal to some function f of xy, and y dot is equal to some other function g of xy. The reason this is such a useful form is because now we can visualize the differential equation by creating the vector x dot y dot. So for example, at x is equal to 2, y is equal to 1, then the vector at this point will be f of 2, 1, g of 2, 1. And at the point 3, 1, then the vector will be f of 3, 1, g of 3, 1. And at the point 4, 1, then the vector will look like this. And if we do this for all points, then we will get a vector field like I'm showing here. And so if we give our system an initial condition at time t is equal to 0, then we can easily see what happens as time goes on. Okay, I think that's enough recap. Now if we label the equation dx dt is equal to f of xy equation 1 and dy dt is equal to g of xy equation 2, then we can divide equation 2 by equation 1 to get dy dx is equal to g of xy divided by f of xy, which we can rewrite as this and this. And if we take the definite integral of both sides, then we'll just get this. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means regardless of where we start and where we decide to stop, the integral over the curve it's made, which I'll call c, must be equal to zero. And this will be true of all trajectories, even trajectories that happen to link up, like this one. Now this integral around this closed curve might look familiar to you if you're a physics or engineering student that studied fluid flow or electromagnetism before. This formula is also known as a flux integral and can be rewritten as the vector fg dot n dl and it represents the net flow across the closed curve c. Now, if you aren't familiar with this physics formula, don't worry, that's not the intention of this video. I only bring it up so that I can make use of what physics nerds call the divergence theorem. It turns out that for any simple closed curve, this expression is also equal to the double integral of the partial derivative of f with respect to x, plus the partial derivative of g with respect to y times dx dy. And this tells us that we no longer need to integrate over the curve C, we just need to integrate over the area A inside this curve. Okay, so we know that for any closed curve, this double integral must be equal to zero. How can we use this result to disprove the existence of periodic orbits? Well, just flip the thinking around. If it turns out after evaluating this integral that it's not zero, then we've shown that it can't be a closed curve. And when is this not going to return zero? Well, when the stuff inside the integral always has the same sign. In other words, if the partial of f with respect to the partial of x 
plus the partial of g with respect to the partial of y is always positive, then the integral will also end up being positive, and so not zero. Likewise, if the stuff inside is always negative, then the integral will also end up being negative, so not zero. And so, therefore, in regions where these cases are true, we can rule out the existence of periodic orbits. Let's see an example of this. Consider once again the spring mass damper system with a mass of 1, a stiffness of 1, and a very generic nonlinear damping C of x. And to make this somewhat realistic, let's assume that C of x is always greater than 0. The governing equation for this system is x double dot plus c of x times x dot plus x is equal to 0. Just like before, we can put this into state space form like this. Where this term here is f of xy, and this term here is g of xy. Now let's look at the term del f del x plus del g del y, which is 0 minus c of x which must be less than zero. And because this must be less than zero for all x and y, therefore we know it's impossible for periodic solutions to exist. This spring mass damper system will never oscillate back to the same point. And there we go, we found another method to rule out the existence of periodic orbits. But this just begs the question, is there a way to actually prove the existence of periodic orbits, rather than just disprove them? Well, yes, and we'll talk about that in the next video. Thanks for watching.